A while back, I made a video on why I think Sailor Moon Crystal isn't a very good introduction to someone who wants to get into Sailor Moon. And you know what? I think the Sailor Moon fandom really liked it. She came out of nowhere and sprang a surprise attack on us. How do you feel, though? Angry! <gasps> In all seriousness though, I got mostly positive reception from the video, but there was one complaint that kept sprouting up over and over. The animation has been fixed. The animation gets fixed in the Blu-ray releases. Almost all the bad animation gets fixed on the Blu-ray. I know they're gonna fix the bad animation once it's on DVD. A complete waste of my time. I can sit here and ramble about how Sailor Moon Crystal is actually a really good anime and intro into the Sailor Moon fandom. But I won't. However, I will sit here and say that, sweetheart, the animation will only be flawless in the Blu-rays, in which you have not bought. Right? Right. If you want to b about the animation and how bad it is, maybe, just maybe, you should get the Blu-ray and make judgment off of that. Now, there's actually a really good point to be made here. Why didn't I review the Blu-ray version of Sailor Moon Crystal? Sure, I showed some pretty ugly examples of where the Blu-rays still went wrong, but overall, even I have to admit that they're an improvement over the original show. So, why didn't I review Sailor Moon Crystal in its Blu-ray version? Well, the answer is simple, really. It's because I can't. The Blu-ray edit of the show can only be found legally here in the States for about $30 plus shipping for DVD. I'm not even talking about the Blu-ray edition or special edition with bonus accessories. I'm talking about basic DVD. Since I only reviewed the first arc, I would have had to buy seven editions for 14 episodes, each at $30, bringing me to a total of $210 plus shipping, or $390 if I was going to purchase the entire series. Of course, at this point, some fans will say that if I wait for the Viz Media version, my purchase will be a lot cheaper. This is true, but I wanted to get my video out when Sailor Moon Crystal was still irrelevant, so July of 2015 when the series was ending. It would have been very inconvenient for me to wait, especially since there's been no announcement of the English release date. But even if I somehow managed to gather up all that money and got the Blu-ray edition in my hands, I still wouldn't be able to review it, since the DVDs contain zero subtitles. If you do not speak Japanese, you are out of luck for watching the Blu-ray edit. Unless you wanted to pirate the content with fan subtitles, of course. Today, pirating is the only way I can review the Blu-ray edit of Sailor Moon Crystal. Despite my negative feelings about the show, I did support it financially by watching it on my Crunchyroll subscription. It doesn't matter whether I like it or not, if I view content, I will at least try to spend some effort to support it by watching ads or paying for subscription services. Of course, I'm just talking about the practical side of things. I could talk about how the original internet broadcast was marketed as an official product and not a rough draft. That it would be absolutely ridiculous to expect the same out of anything else. Oh, Roger Ebert, why'd you give that film a bad review when you saw it in theaters? You know the DVD version is gonna be updated, right? I could also talk about the opinions some fans have that the edits themselves should have never happened in the first place, that the covers look incredibly wonky, and that many errors were never corrected at all. But when it comes down to it, none of that really matters anyway, because I can't review the Blu-ray edit of Sailor Moon Crystal without pirating it and I won't pirate it. It's as simple as that.